At long last, the sequel to the game that friendzoned a generation! Is it possible? This time, things will be different? Turns out, the answer is yes! But remember, it's only possible things will be different. I never said anything about a guarantee. Really, it's all about spitting some game. And this guy's about to slay hard! Oh man, get in line, ladies. And by ladies, I mean Evelyn and Emily. You see, in the spiritual successor to Emily's Away, you get to talk to two girls at the same time. And both of their names start with E. Coincidence? Probably, pr probably not, honestly. The developer, Kyle Seeley, is the kind of man who does nothing by accident. For this game is one that pulls on the heartstrings like no fancy open-world cinematic whatchamahoosit ever could. This game puts you right in the experience of a teenager searching for love. There's no overarching evil that pushes romance to a side plot. There's no fancy visuals to woo you. Only text, nostalgia-inducing buddy icons, and your feelings. Got it? Because today, I'm gonna navigate the winding maze of romance over instant messenger. My reasonable goal is to date Emily or Evelyn, and my reach goal is to go full poly. But it's probably not gonna happen though. So let's get into it! Chapter 1 begins in the summer of 2006 with a quote about the titular Emily. Emily. Who is Emily? My mother would say she's everyone. Every girl, every boy, every person that anyone has ever loved. So right off the bat, we know this story reaches beyond a boy loving a girl. It transcends all genders. Which is good, because I sexually identify as a bottle of mustard. <laughs> Oh, sweet release. And with that, I'm ready to chat up some women's. Hmm, August 3rd before senior year. That's right, we're talking to high schoolers. Well, video's already started, what are you gonna do? Hmm, screen name? Tree bra. First name? Grant. That is my first name after all. Icon choice. Definitely hey ah hey ah he the, the He-Man guy. That'll impress him. Speaking of which, we have a message from none other than Punk Foe Eva. She's having trouble deciding what color to paint her nails. I say black because <laughs> that's not even a question. Are you Punk Foe Eva or Normie Foe Eva? You decide, Evelyn. Soon after, Evelyn asks how my summer's going. All super cash, I drop the just some summer romance bit. She's totes into it. And I know what you're thinking. How are you so good at this, Grant? Well, don't you worry, eager viewer. There's plenty more smooth AF messenger game for you to take in. Evelyn talks to us about first meeting each other in history class after the teacher sat us next to each other. She talks about how excited she is to see her favorite angsty bands at Warp Tour and proceeds to send us a link to one of her favorite songs. I tell her the song's alright, cause it's alright. Evelyn tells us she's going over to Jackie's house tonight, and that's pretty exciting, but- <gasps> Emily messaged us. It's at this point things start to get interesting. We're messaging two potential she mates at once. We're tabbing between the conversations with the keyboard fire that only a teenager at the dawn of the information age can summon. Is your mind boggled yet? We're gonna keep this boggle fest going. Because turns out Emily plays video games. She tells us she's addicted to Sims 2, and I think that's a pretty solid choice. Meanwhile, Evelyn is now about to leave for Jackie's house because Steve, with his fake ID, finally bought the alcohol. Not to mention Emily likes RPGs, and I like RPGs. And now Evelyn and I are making plans to meet up next weekend! But before we can finalize anything, she exits stage left with that logout button and warns us of incoming drunk texts. Girl gon' get drunk! Emily, on the other hand, tells us she spent the morning at her boyfriend Jeff's house. Who's this Jeff guy, huh? You better than Tree Bra? Well, I think not! Because Emily said it was super boring at Jeff's house and she'd rather be talking to people online anyways. Later on in chapter one, we find out she was bored at her boyfriend's place because it always turns into people getting drunk with no other purpose than to be drunk. And now he's inviting her over to do the same thing all over again. Now she wants an excuse to help her get out of it. She winds up going with the old schedule conflict excuse and then agrees to hang out one-on-one -on -one tomorrow. Suck it, Jeff! And with just a little more conversation, the night is over. Chapter one is behind us and we can all sit back, relax, and take in the hashtag oh so delish and romantic happenings of chapter two. Here's where things start to get juicy. Chapter two starts several months later in October of 2006. Coincidentally, the very same month when North Korea supposedly tested their very first nuclear device ever. An omen of things to come, or just a not-so-fun, fun historical fact. You be the judge. After talking with Emily for a bit, she mysteriously changes her status to away, yet makes it clear she wants to keep talking. Turns out she's hiding from Jeff after an argument where he was being a huge dick nozzle about Emily not wanting to come over. See, Emily doesn't like the fact that hangouts at Jeff's place always turn into people sitting around just getting drunk. She doesn't drink, she's kind of self-conscious about it, but I tell her to do her thing. You do you, girl. After that, we just start talking about life. Emily wants to go to college in New York. She wants to move somewhere far away and be wild and free. Exploration of the world and herself is Emily's mantra.
Ezra, and I couldn't agree more. We're bonding so hard right now! But what about Jeff? Well, Jeff wants to settle down early and have kids. So fuck Jeff! What an idiot! He can't make Emily happy! Only Tree Bra can do that. To add to this, Jeff is totes ready to do the do with Emily. He's ready for that horizontal tango and to become the two-backed beast. Emily, however, isn't ready for such activities. Then Emily asks why I've never been in the relationship and hints that if she was single, well, you can fill in the rest. Then I give her the shittiest nickname I can think of, Millie, and she loves it. Then she asks if I want a nickname. And, uh, hmm, yeah, I guess. Definitely Grant's bra. Uh, oh, I, I don't get any more letters? Well, this name is a problem for obvious reasons, so we'll go with Grant Man! Emily can't get enough of the Grant Man! Until she signs off. But she'll be back! Next is Evelyn, who says it's Friday the 13th, and she's right. She asks what I'm gonna do to celebrate. I say, black magic. Smooth! We talk about some Halloween costume stuff, and then BAM! She drops a game on us. She asks a question, I answer it. Then it's my turn to ask her a question for her to answer. Rinse, repeat. The Questions start in interesting territory and slowly make their way towards juicier topics like drugs and crushes. All right, let's get serious. Do you have a crush on anyone? Yeah, I totally do, lol. Oh, scandalous. I wonder who it is. I know what I'm asking next. Do you have feelings for anyone? If yes, who? Unfair, that's like two questions in one. From here, she gets lawyered, and to keep the hot gossip train rolling, she agrees to answer both questions. Her answers are yes and Steve Myers. She goes into how they used to date, and things got serious, and how she still has feelings for him, and it's complicated, and then something about a fling, and the takeaway here is there's nothing about this guy! Nothing about me. We keep talking, and eventually I tell her I've totally had real-life actual sex. Even though I told Emily I've only ever gotten to third base. I also told Evelyn I'm super down to have kids and settle down early, and that being wild and free is totally not my thing. Which, again, is the opposite of what I told Emily. My bad. But hey, that's what happens when you have the short-term memory of a tree squirrel. I'm sure none of this will blow up in my face, though. It's gonna be fine. Chapter 3, in January of 2007, will prove it! This chapter is all about emotional support. More specifically, making up for the emotional support these two women's men clearly don't provide. Emily is drunk despite her saying she would never drink. Evelyn is feeling sad and worthless, and no matter what I say, she doesn't feel better. And by the way, we agreed on the nickname Evie, and it's super adorbs. Anyways, after having to ask like a billion times what's going on with each of these two, they start expressing their problems. Unfortunately, Evie needed me to respond so quickly I couldn't keep up. It's a totally reasonable time for a response, but she freaks out, goes full cray cray, and logs out. Millie does basically the same thing, except she completely misinterprets the sentence, and that brings us to now, to mean I thought her and her boyfriend were broken up now? Which obviously isn't true, but she thinks I believe it, and then she won't drop it, and things get really salty between us real quick. Uh, redo! This time around, a reasonable strategy is to only piss off Emily. She doesn't want to be called Millie anymore, that's how bad I done goofed! But things are going swimmingly with Evie. She eventually says her ex-boyfriend, who is currently dating someone else and is totally just Evie's friend now, tried to kiss her. When she refused, he went and told everyone that she tried to kiss him! Fucking Steve. But Evelyn's lovely. I'm there for her. I give her some advice, and then it happens. We both admit we like each other. Cutesy phrases and emoticon hearts are exchanged. And then we say goodnight. Whoa! This time around, the sequel is way better than the original. First Emily is away, you can go duck yourself for making reciprocated love impossible! Chapter 4 gets even better! April 2007 is the time of year, and you and Evie still aren't officially a thing, until the courage builds up to ask her to prom over instant messenger. Smooth. Cause she says yes! You even help her pick her dress color because you know she's into dark black. Her favorite color. You get major brownie points for that. Brownie points to be exchanged for... making out? She's totes into it right now, saying hopefully we can get some alone time after prom. Exclamation point! And that's not all! Out of left field comes a message from Emily! Remember, we haven't talked to her in months. She apologizes for being so moody last time and misses me. She says I was always so composed even when she was such a mess. The friendship is rekindled and there's a surprise. Emily, in the time we didn't talk, became good friends with Evelyn. She talks about how cool and how pretty Evelyn is and that you deserve to be with a girl that awesome. Really, it's just a corticopia of love? Boy, I can't wait to see what Chapter 5, the final chapter, has in store. Chapter 5 takes place in June 2007, after senior year, and begins with a message from Emily. She talked to Evelyn about you, and during that conversation, the you she thought she knew seemed 
off. She doesn't give you specifics. Enter Evelyn. Evie is clearly upset, giving short answers at first. Clearly the conversation between these two did not go well. After some questions, she reveals what's been eating at her. She says one of the things that attracted her most to me was that we had the same goals in life. Have a family, settle down, do the traditional thing. I told Evelyn I wanted that. I told Emily I didn't. I even told Emily I hadn't had sex. But I told Evie I did. Now, neither of them knows what to believe. I didn't just fib to Emily, I, I tried to manipulate her. I tried to manipulate Evie too. Everything about me is is wrong. For a brief time, we reminisce over good memories. We remember the good times, but it's not enough. No matter what I say, Evelyn just can't trust anymore. College is coming up anyways. Maybe it's time to end things. After a little more talking, it's clear what must be done. Free bra done fucked up. He done fucked up real bad. I'm not even sure if we did the sex, but I do know it's all over. And that's what sucks the most. But hey, this was just my playthrough. If I'd been more truthful, or in this case, more aware of who I tell what, maybe things would have worked out. Sure, my telling different things to each girl was an accident and the story was fiction, but the emotions are real, damn it! And it's all my fault they turned sour. Huh, <sighs> love hurts. Indeed, this is no friend zone simulator. Emily is away too, is a real life dating and friendship simulator. Maybe it'll go amazingly, maybe it won't. That's life, especially when your only options are a bunch of predetermined responses. For me, the takeaway here is know yourself and don't lie about it. And don't forget about it either. Otherwise, you'll be lonely forever. Or I'll just assume it didn't work out because both girls are mustard phobic. Oh, 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 I'll take that happy ending. And with that, I have a question for you. Which e-lady were you into the most and why? They both seem pretty cool, honestly. Just a little emotional sometimes. Some of that was my fault though. But hey, I'm not perfect. For even more proof of that, check out our Emily is Away story you never knew from way back when. Also, consider supporting us on Patreon if that tickles your fancy. And speaking of patronage, it's about time I shout out some of the awesome patrons who help make this channel a reality. Thank you to Lady Miranda Dogson, John Caparso, and Yangaroo. Each of you has contributed to really help Treeskull out, and we can't thank you enough. To all those patrons who may have been expecting a shout out, after your second month, we'll be doing just that. Besides that, I think we're done here. Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you all in the next video. Bye!